Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, um, I, Betty, where are you? Betty, can you stand up? She was here for 16 years as president of the Friends. I think we should give her a big round of applause for 16 years with the Friends. Of Thank you for your wonderful service and work, Betty. And we're so thrilled to be here in this beautiful, beautiful Richardson room. And we want to thank Christy Lockhart and the friends of the Thomas Crane Library for inviting us back. We love being here. And we have a fun show for you. And I'm also very blessed to be here with my dear friend and wonderful collaborator, Luke Malloy. Now, yeah, let's hear it for Luke. Luke is amazing. Um, I used to teach at Eastern Nazarene College right down the street there, and I met Luke um, there, and he started playing for my students for their lessons and recitals, and I knew from the moment I met him there was something very special about him. He has an amazing talent, and you're going to hear more of that today, so I'm so happy that Luke could play this concert with me. So this first song, um, well, actually, the first song we sang was Always um, Being in Love from Brigadoon, and many of you probably know Brigadoon, either the musical or the film, and that was one of the great songs from the score, and this first set is oldies and classic Broadway that we hope you'll know and love, and this next song is another, another great standard from South Pacific, a beautiful ballad of wanting to have love and just trying to grasp it and nearly having it and then losing it. And in the show, the character Emile de Beck has fallen in love and thinks he's going to marry the woman of his dreams and then it all falls apart. But luckily, later on in the show, love does win out. But at this moment, he just thinks that this nearly was mine, this love that he had. Like this, so I get to choose all of the favorite songs 
that I love to sing, and I get to sing songs that male characters usually do in the show, so I love being able to do that and share these songs with you. This next song is actually from a movie first, the 1971 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and it was sung by the late, great Gene Wilder. And then in 2017, they finally made a musical version of it, and it's been touring. It was on Broadway. And I, I found out, I love to, when I do concerts, I like to read about the songs, and I love to see the journey of songs and how they were created. And when I was doing some research on this song and the show, I found out that for Coos and Newley, the two songwriters and lyricists, they wrote the song in one day over the phone. So I was like, oh my goodness, it's like such an amazing song, and uh, I just love to share those little fun facts with you. Um, for me, this song is just, it beautifully encompasses what music and art are all about and how they can take you into a world of your own imagination where you can live there and be free. So please enjoy Pure Imagination. <laughs> Door. It's one of my favorite songs. It's from My Fair Lady. Um, and in this scene, if you know the show, um, it was a musical and then made into a wonderful movie as well. Um, Freddie is on the street where Eliza Doolittle lives, waiting and wanting for her to come down and fall in love with him. And even though he doesn't quite get the girl yet, the song is just full of hope and joy, and it's really one of our favorites. So please enjoy on the street where you live. No! 
Isn't he amazing? Thank you. All right, you've come to my first solo of the day. Very exciting. Oh, let me say something. Hang on. Oh, please. I forgot to say, when you've got someone as wonderful and amazing as Luke is, I drag him to all my concerts when I can. I like to showcase him because he's so wonderful. So he's going to be doing some solos throughout this program, and I know you'll love them. Now. <laughs> So I hope we're not sick of my fair lady, because we have some more of that coming up. Uh, I happened across an interview with Julie Andrews this morning, and she told a story that I thought some of us might be interested in. Uh, Julie Andrews was doing My Fair Lady on Broadway in 1956, 57. And she's doing the show one night, and one of the producers comes up backstage behind her, and she goes, you know, no need to worry, Miss Andrews, but uh, Walt Disney is in the audience. He's sitting, he's come to see the show tonight. And she's like, well, that's lovely. You know, maybe he'll come backstage, tell me, you know, it was a good job and everything. And, um, and so he comes back after the show and he's like, you did a wonderful job. I have a role in mind for you that I want you to do. It's based on these short stories um, that P.L. Travers wrote uh, and it's Mary Poppins. And would you like to come and do Mary Poppins? And she said, well, you know, I'd be very interested in it, but I'm actually pregnant now. I'm about to take my leave from my fair lady and um, go have my baby. Uh, and he said, oh, that's okay, we'll wait for you. And so she goes off, she has the baby, waits a couple months, and then they all go to Los Angeles and they make the movie. And uh, in 1965, the Academy Awards season, it was the first time, I think, that two movies had been nominated for more than 10 Oscars. And it was Mary Poppins, and it was My Fair Lady. And I was going, oh, Julie was very busy that year for doing both movies. I'd forgotten she had not been in the My Fair Lady movie. Who was it? You remember who it was? Uh, Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn, yes, had done it. Did I say that? A major mistake. A major mistake, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I agree, she a major mistake. Uh, Julie Andrews, by the way, wasn't famous <laughs> enough. That was the idea when they didn't cast her for that not role famous she enough. created. Yes. It's a and you as well? Yes. She didn't sing though. Audrey didn't sing it. No. Didn't no, sing it. Someone Nixon. sang for her. Wasn't it Marnie Nixon? Probably Marnie Nixon. Well, anyways, the nice thing about the story is that Julie Andrews won her Oscar for, for Mary Poppins and Audrey Hepburn wasn't even nominated. So, take that. <laughs> and this is uh, the overture to my fair lady.
share a few more classic Broadway wonderful songs for you. <clears throat> this first one is from Frank Wildhorn's Jekyll and Hyde. And it's a powerful love ballad that Lucy sings as she is searching and wanting to find love. And she's wondering if she can find it with a handsome but double-timing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But at this point, she doesn't know about the alter egos. She just wants to find true love. is very powerful. Frank Wildhorn is a wonderful composer. Linda Adder created that role in 1997 and um, she, it's just one of the great roles for um, stage. Now this next song I'm going to need both hands. Christy and I both love Sondheim so I always try to sneak one on the program. This character is from the musical um, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum by the great Stephen Sondheim, who we unfortunately lost last year. And this is a very fun character to play. Her name is Philia, and the scene is ancient Greece, and she is a virgin courtesan, and she is in love with and engaged to Hero. And everything's going great until she gets sold to the macho Captain Miles Gloriosus, 
who is on his way right this minute to take her away from her hero since she has just been bought and sold. So in this scene, the very pretty but not quite so smart Thelia is trying to explain to her fiance hero that by loving and kissing and holding and wooing the captain, that'll show him how much she really loves Hero. And needless to say, Hero does not think this is such a good idea. But Felia thinks that that'll show him. Let the captain wed me and woo me. I shall play my part. Let him make his mad passion to me. You will have my heart. He can have the body he paid for. Nothing great duo George and Ira Gershwin because how can we do a show without them this is from a film not a Broadway musical but a film shall we dance and it was sung by the great Fred Astaire to Ginger Rogers and it's a song about mixed joy and sadness of a love affair that is ending and how no matter what happens you can't take those memories away from the lovers and while I was looking about looking into this song in the film, I read that this movie was made in 1937 and came out just two months um, before George Gershwin, he had died and he never got to see the film. So it's a sort of sad, but I think that they can never take the beautiful Gershwin songs away from us. And this song, I think, took on a lot more meaning um, after that, but it was a sad thing that he never got to see the finished product. But this is a wonderful song. They can't take that away from me. The way 
to say about this next one. Um, it's the longest running show in the world, at least in London. You know, the opera just closed on Broadway and it was 35 years, but Les Mis has been running for 38 years in London. And put on your revolutionary caps. Thank you. 
to go into the world of Disney because who doesn't love all things Disney? I know I love Disney. And we'd like to share some wonderful songs with you. Some you may know and some maybe you haven't heard before. This first song is from Mary Poppins and it was said to be Walt Disney's favorite song of all songs in all of the films that he produced. And it was also the favorite song of P.L. Travers who wrote the story, Mary Poppins. And I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful melody with very heartfelt lyrics. So I hope you enjoy Feed the Birds. trying to find Disney songs and I came across this one and just fell in love with it. It's a song, um, well, sort of like Finding True Love, Cinderella style. It's called So This Is Love. And I can fly 
song, again from Cinderella, um, and I'd like you to take a look on, I think you all found it, right? A dream is a wish your heart makes. So no excuses, you've got the words right in front of you. And what I'd like to do is I'll sing it through once, but if you already know the tune, come in the first time. And then I expect everyone to come in the second time because you've heard it once, okay? So this is A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, and I'm looking forward to hearing you. Here we go. by Harold Arlen, who wrote uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, all of The Wizard of Oz, most of Judy Garland's uh, songs. And so here's a nice little light. It's only a paper moon to kick off our moon set.
songs um, a little more jazzy. This is I'll Be Seeing You. And this was originally a popular song, then it was inserted into a musical called Right This Way, which had 15 performances on Broadway before it closed. So the song almost died, but then it was picked up again for the movie I'll Be Seeing You, a 1944 war film. And then Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra took a hold of it, and their renditions brought it to a wider audience. I'm sure many of you know the song. It's got beautiful lyrics and a very haunting melody. And Luke and I do hope we'll be seeing you again sometime soon. I'll be seeing you. Lockhart again and the friends of the Thomas Crane Library for all they do for this wonderful series. Thank you, Christy. We love being here. Yeah, let's hear it for Christy. Yes. Um, she's a wonderful singer. Hopefully one day I'm going to get her up here to sing with me. Mm, one of these days. Anyways, thank you, Christy, and thank you, everyone at the Friends, and we thank you all for coming. This last song is not from a show or a musical. It's just a great song and so much fun to sing, and I like to scat somewhere on a program, so I had to put this on so I could scat a little. It's the great Fly Me to the Moon by Bart Howard. Oh, I long for all I worship and adore. 
Thank you, everybody.